So in this uh, last part of uh, lesson three, we will define the notion of a bipartite graph and we will see how you can use the PFS algorithm that we discussed earlier to check if a graph is bipartite. Bipartite graphs are important in practice and having a fast algorithm to check if a graph is bipartite is very important. So I want you to read section 3.4 from our textbook. So here is the definition of a bipartite graph. It's an undirected graph where the nodes can be split into two groups such that all the edges are between nodes of different groups. For instance, you could define one group being blue nodes and the other being red nodes. In that case, every edge in the graph should connect a blue node with a red node. You should never have in a bipartite graph a connection between two blue nodes or a connection between two red nodes. Recommendation systems such as those used in Amazon or Netflix, they would have all the users or, or customers on one side of the graph, all the products or movies on the other side, and every time someone buys a product or likes a movie, there is an edge from that user node to all those products that the person bought. So we can use a bipartite graph of that sort to identify users that like similar products and make recommendations to those users about other products they may like. Now, why would you want to check if a graph is bipartite? It turns out, as we will see much later in this course, that if the graph is bipartite, it is like a special structure and that makes many problems, many algorithmic problems, actually either easier uh, or tractable. So it may be that for a general graph, the problem is intractable in the sense that we don't have a good algorithm, a, a, an algorithm that can run in polynomial time. But if the graph is a bipartite graph, then we have such uh, algorithms. So a basic fact about bipartite graphs is that they cannot contain a cycle that has odd length. This is very easy to see for triangles. Of course, triangles have an odd length. If we have a triangle in a graph, we can say that this node could be blue, this node would be red, this node would be blue, but then we have an edge between two blue nodes, and that means that the graph cannot be bipartite. More generally, suppose that we have a bipartite graph that has a node length cycle. Suppose that the cycle has a length 2k plus 1, which is, uh, of course, a node length dot 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 we have 2k and 2k plus 1 so this cycle that you see here has a node number of nodes and the node number of edges suppose that we start labeling the nodes as blue for uh, the odd nodes red for the even nodes blue the even nodes are red the odd nodes are blue we end up with this last edge that connects to blue nodes even though we assume that the graph is bipartite. So this is a contradiction, which proves what we claimed earlier, that the bipartite graph cannot have a node length uh, cycle. So now that we have established that bipartite graphs cannot include any cycles of odd length, we can finally give an algorithm to check if a graph is bipartite. The algorithm is very simple and you already know it. We traverse the graph using BFS from any source node you like. If the graph is connected, as we know, the PFS process will eventually traverse all nodes and it will put nodes in successive layers. You will have the source at layer uh, 0, then you will have layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, and so on. Now, what we can simply do, the only change that we need to do in the BFS algorithm is to give these successive layers a different color either blue or red. So we can start, for example, with the source being blue, layer 1 being red, layer 2 being blue, layer 3 being uh, red again, and so on and so forth. I want to emphasize here that the edges that you see in these visualizations are not edges of the BFS tree. They are edges of the original graph. I want you to remember here something that we proved in part 2 of this lesson. We proved back then that you cannot have an edge that connects two nodes 
in layers that differ by more than one. All the edges of the graph will either be between nodes of successive layers or they will be between nodes of the same layer. Now that we remember this part, exactly one of the following properties will hold. Either we will have no edge between two nodes of the same layer and in that case the graph is bipartite like uh, what you see here, we don't have any edges between nodes of the same layer. All the edges are between nodes of successive layers. So we will prove that when this is the case, the graph is bipartite. Or in the opposite case, there is one or more edges between nodes of the same layer, then the graph must be non-bipartite. So to prove this theorem, we need to prove two parts. The first part is that if there is no edge in the graph that connects two nodes of the same PFS layer, then the graph is bipartite. So this is easy actually to see because given that we cannot have edges between layers that differ by more than one, the edges can only be either between nodes of successive layers or between nodes of the same layer. So here we are assuming that there is no edge between nodes of the same layer. That means that the only edges can be between nodes of successive layers. But we have given a different color to each layer, right? We have blue, red, blue, red. So the edges of the graph can only appear between nodes of different colors that shows that the graph is bipartite. So the second case of this theorem is a bit more uh, interesting but still quite easy. It states that if we have two nodes in the same layer that are connected with an edge, then the graph is not bipartite. We will show that in such cases the graph has an odd length cycle and as we showed earlier bipartite graphs cannot have such cycles. So without loss of generality, let's assume that the two nodes that have an edge between them in the same layer are X and Y. Uh, before we move any further with the proof, I want to remind you something very basic about trees, any kind of tree. If this is the root of the tree and uh, let's say that uh, we have a node X all the nodes between X and the root are called ancestors of X, right? And of course, if I have um, if I have two nodes X and Y, I can ask who is their lowest common ancestor. So in this example, this node here would be the lowest common ancestor of X and Y. If I ask what is the lowest common ancestor of X and W, you would tell me that it is, of course, the root R. Now that we remember the notion of the lowest common ancestor, I want us to um, go back to X and Y, these two nodes that are connected with an edge. Assume that they reside in some layer LJ of uh, the BFS tree. In the BFS tree, these two nodes must have a lowest common ancestor. Let's call this node Z, right? So this is the lowest common ancestor of X and Y in the BFS tree. Note that Z may be the source, it doesn't matter. Now, the interesting thing is that because Z is an ancestor of X, right? There is a path from Z to X. What is the length of this path? It is J, the layer of X, minus I the layer of i. Of course, this is positive because z is an ancestor of x. And similarly, there is a path from z to y, and it has the same length because x and y are in the same layer. Now we have a cycle, right? There is a path from z to x, there is an edge from x to y, there is another path from y to z, so there is a cycle. What is the cycle length? It is j minus i the length of this path times 2 because we traverse um, this distance twice plus one more hope for this edge here between x and y. 
So what kind of number is this? It is 2 times an integer plus 1. This is of course a node number. So what we just showed is that there is a cycle of odd length and given that a bipartite graph cannot contain any such cycles, we conclude that if there is an edge between two nodes at the same layer, then the graph cannot be bipartite. In summary, if you want to check if a graph is bipartite, you use BFS to place the nodes in successive layers. If you see that there are any edges between nodes in the same layer, then the graph is not bipartite. Otherwise, you know that the graph is bipartite and you have successfully labeled the nodes as either blue or red depending on the layer at which the nodes reside.